That's still uh, red. Right. Everything else is good. Open for 25, 65. Okay, there we go. So, I'm going to give you a 10 minute session for $1. Let's put that through for you. Sure. Okay, I'll find you a psychic. Okay, so I need a credit card, debit card, or a prepaid card. What would you like to use? Uh, uh, a debit card is fine. Okay. Uh, any other card holder? Yes. Okay. Right, it's not a prepaid card, it's a classic card, right? Uh, yeah, it's a debit card, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just a prepaid card, so the, the card companies try and put a pre-authorization hold on. I always try and make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, no okay. So, go ahead and give me the 16-digit number in groups of four. Okay, so I'm going to take $1 off that card, okay, Rose? Sure. Okay, take that for you. Okay, there we go, that's gone through. Yeah, the one we can ask you before they take the payment, uh, we're not allowed to take the payment without you being either, you know, giving you permission or set. If you, say if you buy a package of minutes, you'll set up a payment plan and then those dates will be set. So, you know, it's always a verbal agreement as yeah. to what amount we're allowed to take, okay? Sure. Alright, so let's find you a sec. Yeah, do you think I should maybe tell you more about what the situation is to see if you might be able to find one that's more specialized towards? Um, yeah, we're not really allowed to oh, okay. It's okay. have any information because everything was, because of the way the, the privacy laws work in the, in the European right. community, we're not, allowed to, we're not allowed to share information. If you tell me things, I'm not really allowed to share it with the psychic. They have to, it's their job to know what's going on. You okay. talk to her and ask her questions. But then they can't share the information with any other psychics. We're not allowed to talk to anybody. We're not allowed to share your file information or your. We don't have your credit card details on show or anything like that. They're really strict. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's okay. I think it's a lot stricter than it is in other countries. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I mean as yeah. I said, that's why I have to go through all the details. Even when you've registered, I have to reconfirm all the details because you know. Right. Right. Yeah. It's okay. Okay. So now you have a yeah you have a ten minute session with Luz L U Z. And at the end of the 10 minutes, you will hear a bell. Liz will then ask if you want to continue. If you do want to carry on, after the prepaid 10 minutes are up, her regular rate is $5.50 per minute. Okay, and I just wanted to ask you. Okay. Yeah, I just have another question about something. You know, in the past. Sure, let me just finish. Yeah, okay. let me just finish sure. this and then we can, because okay. I have to, it's the legal requirement. Yeah, okay. So ten, the 10 minutes are up. If you want to carry on, she's 5.50 a minute. If you don't want to carry on, you say, stop the session, please. Okay. And allow Luz to bring you back to customer services so we can then close the file and make you a future appointment. Okay. okay. Sure. Now, what would you like to ask me? Okay. Um, yeah, well, I just wanted to let you know just about some concerns that I've had. Like, in the past, I have not always found some psychics all that helpful. I mean, you know, some, you know, are really accurate. I guess it's different for everyone, but... um. You know, okay. yeah, unfortunately, I have not always had positive experiences with some that I've spoken about. Okay. With. So, yeah, I'm, just okay. in case, yeah, yeah, so I just wanted to let you know, like, in case I feel, like, uncomfortable okay. at any time during the session or if I feel like the psychic is not, or whatever they're saying is not really resonating. If at any point during the session, uh -huh. within the first three minutes, uh -huh. if you're not happy, I'll have to be brought back to customer service and I can okay. find you somebody else to speak with. Okay. If at any point during the session you're not happy, ask to be brought back to customer services and we have an independent body okay. that will then check on what the psychic, what happened with the psychic and if it was indeed, uh, you know, something, if they were trying to make my somebody else of you or something silly like yeah. that, which of course they don't do with psychics okay. with us for years. But if there was any issues, you come back to customer services, we then put it as a pending manager file, the investigative team with a completely independent body, they look into it, listen to the session, and if it is in case, case proven, you will be given an immediate refund, and okay. possibly for its pre-session, okay? Okay, all right, just want to make sure. So they're very okay. thorough, yeah, it's very thorough. Our psychics, they're rigorously, rigorously checked okay. daily. Okay, So, um, we have, and they do listen to the sessions if there are any issues, and as I said, it's yeah, very good. If you don't feel connected within the first three minutes, please come back to customer services, okay? Okay, so just basically just tell the psychic, um, is it okay if I could... Um, just say, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, just say, I'm sorry, I'm not feeling a connection. Can you please put me back to customer services? All okay. right, my dear. Okay, sounds good. Okay. All right. I don't think you'll have any problems with her. She's very good. 
Okay, I hope okay. so. She is a, yeah, she's a really good, she's a lovely, she's an absolute angel. Okay. But, uh, yeah, sometimes you just don't connect, and there's no reason, yeah. and, and sometimes it happens the other way around. Sometimes a psychic will say, I cannot read this person, I need you to give it to somebody else. Yeah, okay. So, okay. it happens both ways, and they're very thorough. Okay? Okay. All right, so you're clear about the 550 per minute if you wish to continue, and if not, you say stop the session and come back to us so we can close the file. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, thank you. All right, Rose. My name is Lee. I'm in the Barcelona office, so you know who you've spoken to. Okay. All right, my dear? All right, thank you, Lee. All right, you're welcome. Hold the line. Sure. Hello, Rose. How are you? Yeah, hi, Louis. Nice to meet you. Nice to have you today. It's my pleasure to talk to you. Um, I am Luz, I'm a meteorologist mainly, but I use as well numerology, astrology as my tools, and I am a clairvoyant too. So tell me, Rose, what are your concerns for today? How can I help you today? Yeah, so there's this particular gentleman that I've been having problems with for like a really long time, and I guess first off it's important for me to mention that he's married and he has two kids, and you know, for a really long time, you know, even though I feel like there is like this, like very deep emotional soul connection between us, you know, um, uh -huh. yeah, like it looks like he's been just trying to, you know, just avoid telling his wife and pretty much everyone else um, who knows him, like about us. And, uh, and, you know, I don't know exactly, you know, what's going on between him and his wife. I guess she does know about me by now, but for whatever reason, you know, they're still together. And, you know, lately I have been trying to leave. I've been trying to, you know, just get away from the relationship. I've just, you know, had want, wanted to give up. I don't want anything to do with him anymore. And, you know, for whatever reason, I have just been still feeling that sort of energetic pull between me and him. So, um, you know, I don't know how else I can explain it better than that. I'm sorry. So I've just been asking, you know, or I just wanted to know, like, if you could, are able to see if he might be putting some type of a love spell on me or something or doing anything to try to keep me from from leaving. I still have a few other questions after this, but I just wanted to see first what you are able to see. Okay, Rose. Um, I'm so sorry, you know, that you are going through this difficult experience, you know? Yeah. And I can feel how much you do have love for this man, you know? And you uh, wish that things are different so you can have a normal relationship. Yeah. Um, I believe that because of your connection with him, because of how deep your connection is towards him and how you feel like it's hard to just let go of him, especially that he is married and this is something that's not uh, making you feel good about yourself. So you believe that this man might be putting some kind of love spell on you to keep you always connected to him on not able to just run away. Um, it's yeah. an important question, you know, Rose, I, I, yeah. I understand you. Yeah. I cannot talk about spell, okay? I, I feel like your connection is intense, and I feel how much you love him, but I cannot really confirm or deny the fact that there is a love spell on you because it's against the company's regulation. Oh, okay. Well, all right, okay. I understand. However... Yes, however, I still can help you with a lot of things and clarify for you for sure a lot of things. Is that okay for you, Rose? Yeah, sure, if you can. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, good. So, Rose, let me confirm your date of birth here. Right, right that's correct. Good. So, what's making you think that this man uh, might be putting, like, love spell on you? What's the thing that trigger you, you know, I mean, to think this way, Rose? Well, you know, it could only be my imagination. You know, I've been very confused about her for a long time, but mm -hmm. yeah, it, it just feels like there's sometimes there's there's something on me, like it's just his energy, like just trying to possess me and control me, and, or that there's just some type of force out there. It's hard to explain, but it just feels like something, you know, that is just trying to possess and control my mind. I don't know how much of it is me or something else, or you know, whether it's him or not, or. You know, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, yeah, and that's pretty much the reason I called for clarification. You know, I don't know what you're able to tell me, but, yeah, um, I, and it, it could just be his energy. I don't know, like, he just, even though he does not seem to uh, intend to treat me well or to make a choice between me and his wife, you know, um, like, <laughs> I just, um, 
yeah, it's been really frustrating. I've just been trying to leave. I've just been trying to let him stay with his wife and work things out with her. But even though it seems like, you know, they don't seem to want to divorce anytime soon, like he still insists on like trying to, you know, hold on to the connection. And I feel like that's not fair to me. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. you see what I, yeah, so. Yeah, I, yeah. I can understand your roles and I yeah. understand your feelings, really. And um, this is really breaking my heart, you know. I can understand you and put myself in your position. Yeah. It's like a fight deep inside you, you know, between your heart and your mind. Yes. And that's why you are not accepting this situation because you are a very reasonable person. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. And for you, you don't want to engage yourself to someone who is married, someone that right. uh, might be considering you as an option. I, you don't want to be an option. I mean, right. Your love for yourself, your respect for yourself, it's not a, like allowing you to put yourself in a such position. You are a Leo. You know, yeah. and you do have a strong personality, yeah. and you are like a fire sign. You want things yeah. to be clear. You want things to happen your way. You want to like it's it's like it's it's you do have a lot of feelings, but you are a reasonable person, yeah. and you are a fair person as well. You know, you don't want to take the happiness of someone else, and this is a huge part of you that I really need to respect because you are a very like wonderful lady. And it's making a lot of sense why you are feeling this way because you are not accepting this love. Yeah. You love this person, but you are not accepting this love. And now, today, you're coming to me and I will help you and I will give you my best help. Don't hesitate to ask me whatever you want, Rose, and I will be giving you the best guidance. Can I have, please, the first name and the date of birth of this guy so that I can yeah. provide you with insights that will be easing your mind and making you understanding okay. what's going on, okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, okay, so his name is Steve. And Steve? Yes. And his date of birth is March 9th, 1964. Okay. So, for how long have you known him, Sweetie, exactly, if you can remember? Oh, gosh. I've just been in this affair with him for four years. And, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, oh, it's yeah. crazy, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not, honey. When it has to do with feelings, you cannot call it crazy because feelings is something hard to be controlled. Yeah, I know. You know, I, and I understand you. And don't be mad at yourself, Rose. <laughs> yeah, I know. Please don't, you know, because I feel like you are mad at yourself. <sighs> I you know, I mean, know. don't. <laughs> yes, go ahead, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree with you. I mean, honestly, sometimes it does make me snap sometimes. I, I feel like, you know, this guy just brings the worst out of, out of me and it forces me to do things that act out of character for myself. And, you know, it's another thing I'm concerned about. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm past the breaking point and, yeah, I'm ashamed to kind of admit that to you. But, yeah, that's another reason I called. I kind of just want to settle things, you know, once and for all, hopefully. And, you know, so... You know, I mean, I'm really angry with this guy for taking me through all this and, you know, forcing me to act in the way that I've, that I've been acting, you know, towards him. So, yeah. Oh, no, I understand you. And I am so sorry that you, that he made you feel this way. Yeah. You know, I'm so sorry that he made you feel this way. And as far as he's a pious rose, he can only make you feel this way because he is a passive person. Yeah. He doesn't take the lead in making a decision in his life. Yeah. And this is something that I am experiencing a lot with the Paishas people, yeah. especially guys. They don't know what's the right for them. And they keep feeling guilty without making a step. He feels guilty, you know, about you and even about his life. But he doesn't know how to make things right. He yeah. doesn't know how to ease your mind. Well, I cannot deny the fact that love does exist, Rose, Mm -hmm. you know, and I am seeing, you know, this important, you know, connection between the two of you, but I cannot deny as well the fact that you are struggling. Mm -hmm. You are struggling too much, you know, and you want him to wake up, you want him to stand up. Come on, he's a man, he needs to man up and understand where he can, like, put you in his life. 
you know. For Nero, I feel like he doesn't want to lose you. And we are going to check this together with the cards for today in order to see what you can expect next from him. Is this, you know, the thing that you want to know, right? Yes, yes. Okay, here we go. I want you to uh, connect to him and connect to me and please pick up for me four different numbers from 1 to 22, okay? Here we go. Ready? Yes. Okay. The number I choose is 10. 10? Yes. 10? Yeah. Another uh, three different numbers, please. Oh, okay. Oh, three, three other numbers or two more? Yes, please. Yeah, three other different numbers. Oh, okay. Four in total. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to end the session. <laughs> it's just, you know, I'm in the beginning of the draw and I still have a lot of guidance to give you, Rose. I so know. what do you think of continuing a little bit at least, you know, so we can cover as much as we can the court? Yeah. What we are going to do is important for you and for your happiness and your future, Rob. Unfortunately, the bell rang and I can't afford any more um, after this. Even just a few minutes? Okay, well, if you can make it fast. Take a long... Yeah, just, yeah, but I'm going to have to hang up shortly. But if you could just make it as fast as possible, yes. Okay, you can stop me whenever you want, Rose, okay? Please don't be worried, okay? Okay. So could you please pick up for me another three numbers from 1 to 22? Seven, fifteen, and four. Good. So, you're picking up here the star card. You're picking up here the temperance, the lovers, and the fool. So, I feel like this man is going to start, you know, I mean, making important decisions about you and him in particular, but about the presence of his wife as well in his life too. Because I feel here that he doesn't want to lose you, you know, and I feel clearly that you are still going to be together. You know, I mean, the first name and the date of birth of his wife, please, Rose? Uh, Rachel, and honestly, I don't know her birthday. I just know she's a Capricorn. Okay. Do you know how many kids do they have together? Two. Okay. Rose, I'm seeing separation between them. Okay, and I can feel it. But it's still going to take time. Yeah. I think they even talked before, you know, about separation for too many occasions because I'm seeing a lot of tension. And I'm not really seeing him satisfied in that relationship, if he shared that with you. So I feel, Rose, that sooner or later this this marriage is going to end. I mean, because he is already... Yes, go ahead, please. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I mean, I was just going to say that, you know, he... They both act as if they're going to, you know, stay together and things like that. Or at least that they claim that they still have plans and, you know, to remain married. And that's the part where I've been confused. And that's why I've wanted to leave and walk away from the situation. You know, because I, you know, just as I'm sure you understand, I don't want to be, you know, part of that love triangle forever. And, but, yeah, I, I, but I think I know what you mean. I mean, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if... Um, if they do eventually divorce, because I don't think this is a healthy marriage, honestly. I don't think that woman treats him well. I think she's, maybe, you know, you might not agree, I don't know, but I mean, at least what I pick up is that they, yeah, I, I think she controls him. <laughs> Just, she is a controlling freak. You don't yeah. like about this. Yeah. She is 100% controlling him. Yeah. She is blackmailing him. She is good with manipulation. She is I mean, it's the constant pop-ups, the constant phone calls. How are you going to get any work done if you're Yeah, my wife's phone? always calling me while I'm doing the show. And I have to be like, stop calling me. <laughs> do, do, you, do you believe that? No. <laughs> she works with you. How is that's, she? that's her right there. Yeah. Oh.
But see, like, she'll tap at me while I'm doing the show. <laughs> She's always like, <laughs> trying to give me stuff. Well, at least it's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. It's telling the truth. Right. <laughs> She's putting me in a bad way. <laughs> See? It, it didn't hurt you. You're a big no. guy. <laughs> she didn't do anything. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> <She's>... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> See, you're getting me in trouble. <laughs> All right. Anyway, when you're married, that's not, no one's the boss. You you have a partnership. No, that's and you not, do what I you mean, want. come on, it that's always the boss. <laughs> yeah. Mike's sitting right over there, so I don't know. Our, my, my marriage is 5149. <laughs> and she's got the 50. So it might as be 99 to 1. <laughs> That's all that means. She is a gold freak. You don't write about this. Yeah. She is 100% controlling him. Yeah. She is blackmailing him. She is good with manipulation. She is. She, I asked you about the gifts, okay? Because she is using, you know, the children as a way. How to control him? How to blackmail him? She's using the family. She's using the property. She's using everything. Yeah. I feel here that as if she is putting herself like the one responsible for him, responsible for his life, responsible for everything. So it's like she's not giving him any kind of freedom to decide what he wants and what he can do. Well, I know that. Okay, she is behind his uh, pain, his sadness, the fact that he's not happy. But we need to put the blame on him as well because he has never been able to put a full stop to her action. That's true, yeah. You know, and he has been always, you know, I mean, letting her manipulate in him and getting yeah. scared of what she can do. So I believe here, though it, 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 it will it take him a long time and it's still going to take him time to make his final decision, but he is going to, to make his final decision because I feel like this man started to be super lost, started to be super uncomfortable, started to hate everything in his life because of her. Wow. And you can notice this, you know, when you are around him. And I know that you are noticing this, Rose. Yeah, already. yeah I, I have noticed. But does she know about me from what you see? Or? She does have her own doubts. And she's not sure who you are or what's exactly the nature of the relationship between the two of you. She does have her own doubts. And she is putting herself... In a competition with you, Rose, without even knowing you. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, Lewis, unfortunately, I might need to end the call, um, but this was very helpful, and I think I know all that I need to know for now. Because um, his wife, she was like the, I believe she, from where I read, this was like her idea, right? This was her idea. Well, she, she's the brains in the whole thing. She, don't, she doesn't care. She cares about the big house and fancy life. And not a nice person. And I would think as a mother, like you have some type of freaking, um, I don't know, you know, nurturing body. It, it, it really would not be hard to make changes to the show. But then again, I get it, you know, because if you tell people it's for entertainment purposes and you could get false positive test results, 
who the hell is gonna believe you? So you say things like, come get the truth. Our test is 99.9% .9 accurate. That's a lie. That is not a freaking DNA test. No. How credible are lie detector tests? Because people always I say think, they know how to beat it. Well, put it this way. My son did a school project, science project, right? So he did on lie detector tests, and he came in with my guy, Dan Ribikoff, and he did the, you know, tests and stuff, and asked, and it was 100%, you know what I mean? So, like, would I ever take one? Hell no. I mean, I would never take one. Why, where are you hiding? Why would you hide? No, yeah, where are you hiding, it's not, it's not that I'm hiding anything, but, like, if it came where, like, you know, would you let anything in your life that's important to you fall into the hands of a lie detector test? No, nah, not if it's not accurate. Right? That's know? what I'm saying. Like, I'll say this. I did beat a lie detector test when I was younger. I had to take a lie detector test, and I lied on that thing. What, what were you what, lying what you about? For? I really don't want to get into that right now. We have to Harvey know this. said you lied, Steve. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're a habitual liar, Steve. You said you lied, Steve. <laughs> so deep and he, he doesn't know how to get out i would hope that <laughs> i would hope that is it's eating at him but I, I i'm the way i'm associating that drinking incident that the dui is with what he's been doing to people it's eating him up inside there's no way that that you're 100 percent satisfied with your life nobody is i don't care how much money you got I don't care what you look like. Nobody on this earth is 100% satisfied. They experience perfection. Ain't such thing. It doesn't exist. You know, like, some a lot of issues were getting to me on the show. Like, we deal with a lot of child molestation. Right. And uh, really hard cases. Yesterday, we did a show about uh, this little kid that, you know, the, the father broke the two-month-old baby's ribs and Ooh. baby end up dying it's just so it, you know to to so it gets heavy at times and, and and so it's like everybody's talking to me and they want their problem solved and i like i didn't even realize it well you I don't got nobody to talk right to like you know yeah. like everybody like who who's gonna help me man i always you know? say that who does the go-to person go right. to so yeah so some good came of it because then i realized hey man i, I need to talk to someone yeah i was too. thinking that there's a His wife just gives me bad witch vibes. Like, I don't know. I don't like her. I don't like her. Because <laughs> she could have been a woman enough, a mother, and, and reached out to me. Gosh, you don't even have to call me. Send me an email. Um, I don't care. Just something like, hey, you know, we apologize. We're sorry you had to go through that. You know, I got $50,000 worth of hospital bills. How the hell? What, what am I... You in eight days, $50,000. Like, that is... Well, who cares, right? Yeah, and if you notice, he's always giving compliments to the women. And I'm thinking as a wife, I'm sitting there and I'm watching my man, and you're saying things like, yeah, you're a very attractive young lady. Like, 
Why do you have to say that? Just why? <laughs> what is the purpose? You're a weird psycho of predator. I don't know. I would not be surprised. I get that. You know, I don't know. I definitely don't feel like Steve and his wife are, they love each other. That lady seems cold as ice. It's something about the way she, she does not seem like she loves her husband. The interaction between them, at least I don't feel that.